Singaporeans don't mind travelling to far away Ulu places for food just like they don't mind bad service if the food is good. Today, we're following Gary around Singapore to seek out a few Ulu food places to see whether it's worth going the distance. Alright, hello once again for another episode of Food Finders. In today's episode, we're going to take you back to old school Singapore, where buildings were not so straight and things weren't so shiny and perhaps there were cars older than 10 years old. Today's real episode title is Ulu Places and if you're not Singaporean, Ulu really means but f nowhere. Places you can't really find but yet people still try to find. Okay, today in Food Finders, we're really going to be finding the food because these places are actually Actually quite difficult to find. Gary, do you do you like to travel far for food? Typically, no, but I will if my wife forces me to. Why do you think Singaporeans are so willing to travel for good food? Because there's nothing else to do in Singapore, honestly. <laughs> We're gonna go to uh, this uncle's spot called Boge. I don't know if that's his name, but Boge in Hokkien means no teeth. Maybe uncle doesn't have teeth. We're gonna find out. <laughs> it just says Jikui. What the hell? He had a custom shirt. All right, so we're here at Boga. It is very old school, back, back, back way in the days that this is how probably Singapore looked like. It's kind of a hidden place, so between you and me, don't, don't, don't go telling a lot of people about this. A lot of the regular patrons here like to keep it this way. They just don't want this place to be advertised too much, which is counterintuitive to what we're actually doing, Seth. So I don't know. There's a little bit of a dilemma here, even for me, but I'm really excited to go try the food. To be Fair, this uh, place has been covered quite extensively online. Do you want to read some of the reviews for people? All right. Miss. Try out if you want to reminisce the old Singapore pre-modernization. From Sean Poon, might be the last really old school makan place in Singapore. Customer service experience is good, except the rude shouting, washing and table cleaning lady. But I actually think that's probably part of the experience. Lim Kok Yang, the cheapest way to go back into the future. Let me give you a bit of uh, background on this place. So it's called Boge Uncle Canteen, which apparently has a uncle with a few missing teeth. And it's one of the last few Ulu Kampong Kopitiams. It's been here since 1969. 1969? When was Singapore's independence? It's five. Oh, so really close. This place is as old as Singapore. All right, let's go eat. We just came out of the uh, very secretive ordering uh, canteen area. The auntie was like, no, no, this is an army camp. You can't like shoot inside here or something. And uh, Seth has ordered me some nasi padang. Pandan yeah. flavored. That's yeah, yeah, the, yeah. That's why it's green. Pandan keeps cockroaches away. It That's also good. keeps my yeah, wife yeah. away because she hates that smell. She hates the smell. This place literally reminds me of certain less developed areas in Penang. It's a very unique location, I would say. Should I just try this? So, yeah, we got you the nasi lemak, we got a curry chicken, this is a asam fish, uh, kangkong, and this like just fried egg. This is a very small piece of egg. Uh, whole thing, this was six dollars. Two pieces of meat for six bucks is still kind of rare, especially if you're getting fish. I'm just gonna eat the rice with the asam fish sauce. It's got some kick to it. I'm not really getting the asami flavor. I am getting the like more of a sambal. So like I'm not getting the soury asam, but it is spicy. Good level spicy. There's some chickens running outside here. I don't think that's um, rare in Singapore actually anymore. Even in down by my house, there's uh, wild chickens in the park, which I th actually think is kind of cute. The chicken is very coconutty. I have a thing for rice and curry. The sloppier the rice curry mixture is, the better. And then this looks like kangkong. First question, would I come back here? If someone want to experience this, then yes. I wouldn't necessarily just come back here purely for the food. I think the food is good, but it's not like extremely better than your standard chai fan or nasi padang in the general Malaysia. I mean, Malaysia. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. We ain't the general Singapore area. I think I got confused because like this place reminds me of Malaysia so much. The half-made tents, like 
things look like it could collapse at any given time. Why you sound like someone from Malaysia come and betray and cheat you already? It's really more of the atmosphere that is super unique. I think the food tastes even better because of the area. The rice is really nice, really fragrant, and that with the curry is just awesome. The fish, mmm, good, not amazing. Chicken, mmm, good, not amazing. Vegetables and egg, mmm. I'd be here just for the atmosphere. I think there's like a vibe of less stress here as well because it's just chill. It is a little bit dirty, so don't wear white shoes here. That's all I can say. We should get, get moving to the next place because I don't know where that is. All right, so we're at Kolbar behind me. Uh, this place is from the 50s. It's a colonial kind of eatery house. This place looks like it's been kept up fairly well and it's very hidden. From the outside looking in, it's just bushes and trees covering it. They used to serve the British offices here with British food, I assume. What's, what's your understanding of Western food in Singapore? Chicken cutlet with frozen potato fries. It's like a standard like black pepper sauce or mushroom sauce on a piece of meat, some sort of potato for the side. Accurate, but also like, that's not all Westerners eat, I feel. Singapore's interpretation of Western food basically came about a lot from the Chinese, uh, particularly the Hainanese. A lot of them worked for dogs. A lot of them worked for dogs? A lot of the Hainanese actually worked for the uh, British Army. And now we have chicken chop. Thank God for colonialism. Ooh, this place doesn't have really good reviews. Dennis Tan. The food is really bad, very bland and tasteless. Dennis, that's kind of what British food tastes like, man. <laughs> Come if you want to enjoy the atmosphere, not the food, and escape from your usual food court. The uncle taking order was super rude. We will find out, Dennis, because I've been through that a couple of times and usually they're not as bad. Could be you. Adrian, all caps, one star. No doubt the view is great and it provides a nostalgic feel. However, this is my first time and will be my last visit. Well, you didn't really explain yourself there, Adrian, but I guess I'll find out myself once I go in. All the food's here now. It looks pretty standard to me. I actually think the ox liver sandwich looks pretty basic. It's literally like a slab of liver slapped between two white bread. I don't even see onions in here. I mean, for eight bucks, I gotta be... It's a, uh. This looks pretty good. Very heavy on the mushrooms and the potato looks amazing. However, however, I did the sound test and... Do you hear that? You don't because there's no freaking sound. The famous pork chop, like a sweet and sour pork chop style. Let's give everything a shot. I'm very interested in these potatoes. Ooh, this this was a crispy piece. This was a crispy piece. But not, I'll give another one a shot. It's a potato. It looks good. There's some stuff there, but it's a lot of things missing. Potatoes are a very cheap ingredient, but it can be elevated a lot. Number one, when you double fry, fry it extra hot at the end, and then let it crisp, and then serve. You did the first fry correct, the second fry, not correct. Add a little bit of salt on top of the potato. There's literally no salt on here, so it's just literally deep fried, soggy potato. In the army, you didn't have time to double fry potatoes, man. Yeah, but we're not in war times anymore, so I don't see that as an excuse. There's a good portion of eggs. However, again, where is the salt? Just a bit, just a bit would do so much. However, it is cooked really nice, runny on the inside, which is exactly how I like to see it, but it's just generally flavorless. I know the Brits don't like flavor. That's, that's kind of like the stereotype. You cannot beat British food. The mushrooms itself, it's the canned mushroom, they're, they're not the fresh button mushrooms because with the fresh button mushrooms, you'd get a lot more flavor from them. The, the flavor has kind of like been extracted out of these mushrooms. So how much was this dish? 10 bucks. 10 something. For 10 bucks, I'm not expecting amazing, amazing things, but for like some basic standard things, I feel like there's a lot of areas to improve here. Salt costs nothing. Sprinkle some like dried parsley on top, which is again, cents to the dollar, and it will make it look amazing. Coal bar, call me if you need help, seriously. Nah. If the theme is to cook like we're still in army days, where there's like nothing to eat, then sure, you should make that a bit more apparent though in your marketing or whatever is going on here. But I would assume like food is a is a tough market in Singapore, so I would only expect elevated qualities. All right, on to the liver sandwich. Tell me that doesn't look a, a bit sad, right? Like, it's sad, right? It's sad. Okay, let's try it though.
The taste is actually okay. I can see this being like a really good snack. Again, I don't think it's anything to rave about. I think there's a bit of nostalgia here in terms of this flavor. I've never had it, it's not bad. They really cooked the heck out of this liver. It's a bit more chewier, it's got that beefiness. And I feel like this is maybe a dish that, you know, back in the day where uh, steak may be a little bit harder to come by, you'd have these like little liver sandwiches. So last we got the Hainanese pork chop. How much was this? $16. I'd rather go for a Japanese katsudon, not gonna lie. Mm. Is Hainanese supposed to be like a sweet and sour flavor? I thought it was like a gravy flavor. It reminds me of sweet and sour pork, but with the pork cutlet style. So like the pork is breaded, crispier than the potatoes. I can tell you that much. It's not a very finesse dish. Like it feels like it's got that Asian style, like fry everything quickly, put it on a plate and eat it with rice. I don't think it's bad. However, I don't think it's amazing either. I can only conclude that this must be just how they made it back in the day and they just haven't changed in 50 years. I do feel the location is fairly nice. Like it's got like this nice outside atmosphere. It's a lot of fields. Like if you want to escape the hustle and bustle of the city or the big buildings, like this is a great location to just come hang, chill. There's a lot of, I'm guessing, nostalgia here. However, I do feel that maybe for the younger generations, it's a little bit hard to connect with because we're just not in that generation anymore. If this was to attract newer people, it's gotta elevate or change its menu a little bit. Okay, that's all I have to say about this place. Let's go to the next Ulu place. So we're here at the final last spot of today's uh, Ulu excursion. I personally would never come this far east. I am at Loyang Wei. Let's cover some uh, Google reviews before I go order the special prawn noodles. By Yu Chen Yo. Probably the best prawn noodles you can find in the far east corner of Singapore. By uh, LP Pua. Uh, if the stall is in a very Ulu part of Singapore and there is a consistent queue, chances are it must be good. I think we just uh, missed rush hour, so there's no queue, but I assume it's pretty good because I saw a couple people already ordering it. And then from a Ken Neo, there's no extra charges for adding noodles if you're feeling extra hungry. They have a big prawn noodle soup that costs about $13.80. So are we going for that that level? Yeah, $13.80 one? XL? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. We're going for the big ones, guys. The XL spawn noodle soup. Seth actually tried coming here with Jen for a Pasaris episode a while back ago for this exact spot. This time, in the Ulu episode, we're gonna try it out. I'll be right back with XL prawn noodle soup. All right, so we're here at the last place. It's a Loyang big prawn noodle soup. Wow, I got the dried version. All right, I gotta get back to shoot here. Everyone's waiting for me. I got the XL prawn noodles. These look like very good prawns. Not as jumbo massive, but the prawns look very fresh and they give you five decent sized full prawns with heads. Very fresh prawns because the shell, very hard and firm shell, very nice colors, and they even split it for you. You know they care because like, look at the plating. The soup looks nice. It's got this like red oil on top, which makes me feel like it's a little bit more like a Penang style Hokkien Mee. You can see already it's just packed with sauce. Like my God, lots of pork lard. Seth is already eagerly waiting on the side. It's interesting how it's 50 cents extra for a dry. Maybe the sauce costs. I'm sure they put more thought yeah. in this one. Yeah, this one is closer to the Penang yeah, yeah, yeah. style. That's good. The soup is great, top three prawn noodle for me at least. Yeah, it's up there. They give a lot of prawns for, for 13 bucks. Like great value. Mm. Prawn noodles by itself, <laughs> like sense. It is very good. The dry sauce, very, very prawny. Like that is good food. Very good quality prawn noodles. The slight spiciness, maybe even the pork rib that they might use in here. The combination is really good. This, this reminds me of Penang level, Hokkien Mi. Whatever they're adding into this dry chili sauce here, like it's very, it's got a lot of pork lard and all that, but like there's a very prawny essence to it that I haven't really been able to figure out how they did that, but it's really good and very generous. You can even ask for more noodles. I confirmed that with the uncle, but just ask before or during when you're ordering, not after. I forgot to ask so he can give me more. He'd be happy to give you more broth on the side too. So all in all, I think for a total of $14.30, that's not only amazing value, but 
amazing flavor. I would put this top three prawn noodles I've had in Singapore. If you're in the area, like I said, if you're in the area for like a business meeting, come by. Like I definitely think this is a place to, to check out. You can see our crew, uh, our crew is like buying more as well. I'm gonna top out some back for my, my wife. If you're in the area, definitely worth the slight detour to try this. Great value, great flavors, exceptional is all I could say. Very surprised for such a Ulu place. This is what makes Food Finders awesome. We were able to locate something that typically you would never be able to find. Let's wrap up the whole episode now. So that concludes for this episode of Ulu places out here in Singapore. Uh, the first two places especially, there's a sense of like, this is what it used to be like. Kobar is a great version of what used to be old, trying to retain for something new. It's kind of giving me the hipstery vibes. The big prawn noodle in the Far East, your standard coffee shop in an industrial area. As you can probably tell by my reaction, that's my favorite food of the day. But then if you're talking about what has the most interesting interesting atmosphere, I would say probably the first one. Boga just reminds me of a world that doesn't exist in Singapore anymore. So if you've never experienced it, that's probably some of the few and last places you'll ever find. When you have friends that love Koba, what do you think? As we were leaving Koba, uh, one of my friends uh, found one of my stories on Instagram. He said he actually really liked it, but then he's also British, so. What are you laughing for? What, Chris, why are you laughing for? I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, today's episode of Ulu Places and taking you through some of the more interesting areas in Singapore to hit up. Um, and if you're ever in the area, go try out these places. Let me know in the comments if you do. Make sure to like and subscribe to Seth's channel. And if you haven't done so already, find me on Instagram and add me because I need more followers. And yeah, thank you. All right, bye. <sighs> That's really good. That is awesome. That's, that hits the spot.